Today, I would like to show you how you can use the objects mode of the Deep Pathology Studio to train an algorithm to detect mitotic figures. You can use this algorithm to get the mitotic count in a region of interest on your slide. You could also train the algorithm to detect non-divided nuclei uh, in addition to mitotic figures, so you could calculate the mitotic index or mitotic uh, ratio in the end, but for today's video I will focus solely on mitotic figures. So the first step is always to create a new project, this time on the objects mode, and add one or more slides. I've already done this, so uh, Today, we'll be working on this slide, which uh, has been obtained through TCGA, the Cancer Genome Atlas Project, and it belongs to a 50-year-old patient with hepatocellular carcinoma. Uh, I have also prepared the categories, so these are mitotic figures, and then background for all the rest that we're not interested in. So that means now we are ready and we can get started and annotate. For that, I will navigate to an area within the slide where I know that there are uh, several mitotic figures, and I will get started by outlining these. So uh, you just have to mark and give a few examples of mitotic figures. It's best if you focus on different uh, mitotic figures, so uh, some that look different, for example, because of the phase in which uh, they uh, have been caught, um, but also depending on different location and uh, other things, so that you can give a variety of examples for the algorithm to best train to detect all mitotic figures. You don't have to annotate exhaustively, so that means you don't have to annotate all mitotic figures in a certain area, but those that uh, quickly catch your eye uh, are a good point to start with, and later on you can refine the algorithm even more. So I've now marked over 20 mitotic figures, and I will move on to giving some information about the background. So these are all objects and anything within the slide that I'm not interested in. So mostly these are obviously regular nuclei, um, and maybe some stroma around, so you don't have to be uh, super precise, but you have to give a few examples. And you can see as soon as you've given enough examples, the algorithm will start training in the background. Um, and we can see what it's actually doing. Uh, we can go to graphs, and here you would see the train loss. Train loss is a, not a percentage measure, measure like accuracy or um, specificity, but this is a sum of all errors, basically. So in the beginning, this is quite high, almost one, and it will quickly go down uh, as the algorithm adapts to our examples. And I will watch it a little bit, and once it has uh, come closer to zero, which would mean that it makes zero mistakes, uh, I will go back and uh, make some more annotations. I think now is a good time for me to become active again. As, you've see, as you see, after a very steep improvement in the beginning, the train loss curve has now somewhat flattened out. And that means I will go to, back to the viewer and I will navigate to an area very close to the one that uh, I was just in, and I will apply the current algorithm. And that means that it uses the most recent version and it will apply it to the field of view. So I can see what mistakes the algorithm makes, for example, where it misses mitotic figures or where it classifies, for example, a regular nucleus as a mitotic figure. So you can see here in yellow, there are the mitotic figures highlighted that the algorithm recognized. And obviously there's a little bit of improvement. For example, I think that we have some mitotic figures that uh, actually have been missed. And I will add these by manually outlining them. And I will also add the ones that were uh, detected correctly by right-clicking on them. So I don't, there I don't have to actually 
uh, draw the entire outline, but I can just right click if I think that they were recognized nicely and they're still added to the training data set. So I think this was looking actually quite good for the beginning. So I will, uh, instead of waiting a little bit more, I will move to a different uh, area in the slide. It is a bit further away and maybe looks slightly different, has different objects in it. And I will apply the algorithm also here. I will also choose a slightly lower magnification to view the slide. So that means the algorithm is applied to a bigger area. This obviously takes maybe just a few seconds more, but I can already start processing the objects as soon as they appear on the screen for me. And this is obviously important because we want the algorithm in the end to work on a variety of uh, regions and that they look maybe slightly different. Uh, this is also can be achieved by adding more slides. Uh, so you can train on more than one slide at a time. But now uh, I have just this one slide. And you can see, for example, this is a false positive. I will add it to the training data set, but then mark it as background by uh, changing the category. So this is quite important. And this is high quality feedback because uh, then the algorithm can learn like that this is not something that I'm looking for and it will improve accordingly. So you can see that this is somewhat a ping pong game between you and the algorithm where the algorithm makes some suggestions and uh, you process them and that way you don't have to annotate let's say 1000 objects and after a while you see what the algorithm has learned but you can see it more or less right away with a little bit of waiting time in between. You can see that there are many uh, false positives because we're now in an area that has different objects that for some reason appear to the algorithm currently as magnetic figures. If we now go back after giving a lot of uh, feedback and a lot of new annotations, if we now go back to graphs, what you see is that the train loss has temporarily increased and uh, it will take a little bit of time for it to come back down to zero. That is the time the algorithm requires to adapt to the new information that it, it has gotten. So similar to this curve, it will also go down here after a while. And I think uh, we're just gonna watch this uh, before we get back to the algorithm. Again, you can see that the train loss curve has somewhat flattened out. And I can now return and I can either continue the interactive uh, learning with the algorithm, for example, on the same slide or on a different slide uh, until I have a general algorithm that works well on multiple slides, uh, just as I want it to be to do. It's also a good idea to perform annotation review once in a while, where you can uh, look through uh, all your annotations to check that you haven't made any mistake, you know, in the haste of annotating. Uh, we made also a separate video on that, so it's recommended to watch this. If you find that there are problems, um, you could also fine tune a little bit the settings, which is usually not required, but uh, I'm just mentioning this here. And once you're happy with your algorithm, what you'll do is you're going to freeze it. That means that it's not going to change anymore. Whether you use the algorithm today, tomorrow, or in five months, it's still going to be exactly the same. The next step is going to be validation. And again, about this, we have made a separate video that is recommended at this point. Um, what I would like to show you now is that very simply, you can create a region of interest uh, by marking it within the slide. And you can then run your algorithm and create a report. So uh, now the algorithm will be applied only to this region of interest. I can also uh, take multiple slides and mark multiple regions of interest and then process all slides in a batch report which will give me the individual reports for each slide 
but also an overall uh, report. But uh, it means that you can step away and let the studio do its thing and just return to the results and process the results as you would like to do. I would just like to, uh, to show the uh, report. So that is what you will get. And it has counted five, 15 mitotic figures. You get an idea about the size, uh, overall size, uh, the average size, and also uh, uh, how big your region of interest uh, was. So you could calculate this per square micrometer, for example. So uh, I hope you've learned today how you can easily create an algorithm with the studio. And if you have any idea for an algorithm or a project that you would like to do with the studio, just contact us. And uh, yeah, we're looking forward to working with you. Bye.